Hey guys, it's so good to see you today. Today is Saturday and it's such a beautiful sunny day. So I decided to put on my makeup today, get dressed, feel really good and positive. And I was saying that despite how we're all feeling or what kind of difficulties we're going through right now, just take today as an opportunity to breathe, to enjoy life, to look for little sounds, sights, things that you see outside that can help ground you, make you feel positive. So today we are getting ready for our next new release restock on Monday. We have new decor and we have some old antique decor. So I'm going to go nice and slow so that you can get a perfect preview of everything that's coming. Now would be a good time to go to the link on this video, click it, it takes you to my website, and there I put together a shopping wish list that you add to cart and download. It's totally free, so just pretend like you're checking out, and then it will automatically send it to your email. And that way, while you're watching this video, you can write down some things that you're interested in. And I'm going to tell you exactly the names of things and how to find them on the website on Monday so you know exactly what you're shopping for. Whenever I go shopping, I know that I need a shopping list, uh, especially while I'm hunting for antiques. It's so easy to walk into a store, wherever you are, um, and be overwhelmed and so excited that you're blanking on what you initially came for. So let's get started. I'm going to show you some favorites from last time. Okay, so these favorites were the little reading books. These are from the early 1900s and they come in all different colors and little styles on the front. They are absolutely gorgeous and I really want you to see the uh, different colors. So I will start with all of the green and I mostly have green in this bundle. I've got a bunch of green, which is great. And all of the different tones go together, which makes getting a little collection of them really fun. So these will be $6 each and I will show you some inside. Uh, but first I want to take you just through a preview of each title so that if you're writing them down, you can pick your title. Okay. Okay, so first we have Puss in Boots and Cinderella. And right now I'm just going to take you through the titles. We have Four Little Cottontails in Winter. And these are the set of green that I have. This is the Mother Goose Reader. Then we have Nathan Hale. Up next is Rhyme and Jingle Reader, which are nursery rhymes inside. We have the Miraculous Pitcher, and if you're an English fanatic, um, Nathaniel Hawthorne is a popular author in the 1800s. Then we have Four Little Cottontails in Vacation, Four Little Cottontails at Play, and this one's coming up um, as a different shade of green than you're really seeing. This is not a yellowy color like you might be seeing on the screen. It's definitely a light green color, just so that you know. This is the story of Robert E. Lee and story of Steam. So here's just a shot of all of them together here. And I will have two, four, six, eight, 10. So I'll have 10 green ones available. Let's move on to yellow. Okay, so I've lined up yellow and blue together. The story of iron, the adventures of a brownie, story of Belgium, four little cottontails, and gifts of the forest. So I thought that I would take you inside a couple of them just so that you can get an idea of what they're like. They are all different reading levels. The story of Belgium, um, it looks like it's a nonfiction. It's got some old pictures inside. And this is more of a advanced chapter book if you're thinking about reading some to your kiddos. You're letting them look at pieces of history, which is really special. Okay, and this one is from 1915. 
for little cottontails. I love the cottontail books. They have the cutest pictures. And I always tell you that I don't like showing you completely inside of all of them because I think that these are treasures to be discovered. And if I gave away um, everything inside of them, there would be nothing for you to discover, like I said. So um, I want you to get a feel for them and then pick based upon um, like your color scheme or like the titles that interest you. Just kind of like that. Um, let me show you a couple of the green books that are really cute. Of course I have more cottontail books in green, but I thought that it would be fun to show you this. Puss in Boots and Cinderella has Puss in Boots in the beginning, and then it's got Cinderella further on as the second story in here. And I studied um, children's lit in college as a class that I had and there are tons of different versions of Cinderella so this is obviously just one of them so it's pretty cool okay and then one more that I thought was really cute um, is the rhyme and jingle reader so I'll take you inside and they have little nursery rhymes that you would totally understand that maybe you're teaching to your kids as little sayings. I knew I grew up knowing these and they're still stuck in my head till this day. One, two, buckle my shoe. Come on, it's so cute. They're such classics. So this one would be a really sweet one to read to your kids. So we have a huge stack of them in this restock. They sold out last time in a couple minutes. So make sure you're on the website, April 27th, 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, maybe you wanna write one on your list. Okay, so now I've got these sweet books. They are from the 1950s. They are the American Singer book two. And I love these because Obviously, I went to school for teaching and anything teacher or music related, I love the music class is special. And inside, um, there's a stamp from the school in Illinois that they use these books at, which is so cute. So here's the inside. As just a little sneak peek, just to get that feel. So they're like old books that you would sing along to in class. I don't know if you did that. We did that with obviously newer books, but they're really, really, really cute and they have adorable illustrations in them. So again, I love, love, love having some kind of history like this in my home and displaying it. You can display it shut or I think that you could even prop it open like you are propping open a cookbook uh, with all the pages. Maybe you turn to a favorite. Maybe you could find these songs on YouTube and play them for your kids and they can sing along. I think any kind of little project that the kiddos right now is perfect. Okay, next up is something that I've been talking to a lot of you about on Instagram and I show you um, all my stories, what's coming, I give you previews. So I was showing you about the Hardy Boy books and I've heard so many stories my story with the Hardy Boy books are from my brother. He collected them growing up. If we ever went somewhere on vacation, we stopped somewhere like an antique store, he would always go looking for them and read them. So I'm sure if my brother didn't read one of these one day, I'm sure he'd go sit down to this day and read it. So everybody's kind of got a special story with the Hardy Boy books. Uh, I, I found six to give to you guys in the shop. Uh, sometimes, giving away treasures is really hard. Um, but this is what I love doing and I love sharing them with you in your home. So I'm going to give you a book tour of the six that I have available. Okay, so I have six available. The Mystery of the Cabin Island. They have the sweetest little blue um, spine there. The Arctic Patrol Mystery. Oh, I guess I'll give you the book numbers too. Okay, so going back to this one, this is book number eight. The Mystery of the Cabin Island. 
This one was book 48. The Secret of the Old Mill is book three. The Ghost at Skeleton Rock is book 37. The Secret of Pirate's Hill is 36. And then the Shortwave Mystery, that one is book 24. Okay, so just a peek inside. They are obviously gorgeous, gorgeous. This one is from 1966. So these are like the 50s and 60s era books. They are so adorably sweet. I could line them up in my window like this. Oh my gosh, I love windowsills. Decorating windowsills are so much fun. So anyway, there's so much you can do. Um, I could go put it on my shelf up there. I posted a picture of them yesterday like that on Instagram. So these are really, really neat books. Uh, maybe that's what you wanna add on your list. Okay, so this next item is a YouTube exclusive. Only you guys are seeing it on YouTube first and you'll be the only ones to know before the restock. So this is a little bit of a surprise just for you. This was an item from last week that was so widely talked about and I'm so glad that when I originally got them, I picked up a bunch so that I could restock it again for you this week if you didn't get one last week. So I'm going to start off with this mini cupcake tin or muffin tin, whatever you want to call it. So this is a three by four. So this is 12 little muffin tins and such a great size. I use mine in layering. Usually mine's up there and then I put books in front of it. So this is one that will be available Monday. Then I have a long and skinny two by four. So this is an eight tin, little pocket muffin tin. And I believe that this is the waffle style. Um, whoops, embossed on here. Okay, so we're going to call this number one, muffin tin number one. The eight is muffin tin number two. Okay, this is the waffle embossed. Tin. Okay, how about this one? So this is another two by four eight. It's larger than the waffle, just for size comparison. This is the Starburst pattern. Um, I said that it reminds me of the Great Gatsby. I don't know why, but I just love how fancy smancy it looks. So this is the eight. It's another great layering piece. This is definitely your favorite style, um, which is pretty hard for me to find, but it's also my favorite. Okay, so this will be tin number three. Okay. All right. Can you believe this? This is a big three by four. So this is a 12 muffin tin, cupcake tin with the starburst oh this is heaven these are so hard for me to find um this will be tin number four this exact one and it's just heaven i mean it is just so cute and vintage i hope you're as excited as i am you're definitely going to want to try to put one of these on your list if you can they are a steal. They are gorgeous. I'm so excited because I have a second one. I got a second one. So I'm happy that I will have two large ones for your picking of the 12 slot muffin tins. This one's a little darker in color. So let's see what we're up to. We have tin number one, tin number two with a waffle. We have tin number three, which is the eight starburst, three and then four, 
which is the lighter color um, 12 Starburst. And then number five will be the darker Starburst. Super gorgeous. I will give you a nice off close look at this one. It has such great contrast. I fell in love with these as soon as I saw them. So I would call this a real treasure. I call something a treasure if it just, like, if my heart sings, like, at the top of its lungs. Like, I'm so excited about something. I call that a treasure. And I think all of these are treasures because I try to pick the best and the cutest. That's what I always say. So you guys know. One, two, three, four, five. Another thing I'm excited about restocking. Um, I only restocked these once and I used the 1920s magazines that I had. And if you know what I'm hinting at, I'm talking about the floral magazines. These ones are special because they're from the late 1800s. So I think that the ones that I have right now go from 1888. It's weird saying that. 1888 to 1898. So within that 10 year span, I have a bunch of magazines for you. And it has been decided that I will put them into groups of three, which a lot of you were talking about. Um, you voted on how you wanted me to organize them for you to purchase in the shop, and you wanted them by threes and individually. So you can pick out your individual magazines, but you can also get a set of three that I will put together and arrange for you. So we are going to go nice and slow so that you can see each magazine. And then I'm going to tell you, um, just like with the muffin tins, it's set number one, number two, number three, and so on, so that we can keep track of which set you like and you can write that down. So let's get started. So this magazine is from December 1894. Um, it's got the prettiest lilies on this page with amazing floral work. The magazines look great for being um, published in the 1800s. You can see at the top of the page that um, Parks Magazine was established in 1871, post-World, no, not World War, sorry, post-Civil War. Um, and this magazine in December was published in the Reconstruction Era of America. So reading it with the lens of knowing what was going on in our country is special. So this is for individual purchase. Um, this will be number one. So I will have two listings for magazines. You will see individual, nice and in capital letters. Okay, so that's where you buy single set magazines and you pick. So this will be number one. Okay, and then when we get there, I'm gonna let you know that there's going to be a second listing you see on the website for um, the trios that I'm putting together. So they will be in different places so that you know that these are individual and then sets. So this is number one, okay. This is number two. This is July, um, what's that say, 1893, okay. Um, this is so pretty, this is called Beautiful as an Orchard, and I will also be listing them based upon their titles that you see here. So this will be number two, Beautiful as an Orchard. Okay, I want it to be as easy and as clear as possible for you to read um, while you're checking out. So articles are inside about flower keeping um, and then there's advertisements which are really fun to look at. Okay, so those are individual. And then I also told you that I have colored magazines. Um, this is blue and it's just the cover that's blue. The inside is a normal um, normal color paper. So I decided to group these two together. They are a really pretty blue color. And these, oh, oh my goodness, I'm running over everything. <laughs> these are from November 1893 and this one is December 1893. Okay, so these are two consecutive months. And there's their little drawings. So I will actually have doubles as well that I decided. So you'll have single, double, and trio that you can purchase. Go 
Okay. So this is um, the double, and we'll call this double number one. So this will be the first double. Okay, then we have a greenish bluish color in a double. This is the second double, double number two, we'll call it. Grand new, um, we'll call it the grand new and hard times. Okay, so this is February 1894 and then May 1894, okay? So greenish bluish color, and that will be a double. So I'm putting the colored magazines in doubles. That's how I have them, um, and these are exactly how I found them. So then we have these gold colors, I would say. It's an orangey gold. This is from April 1894 and then March 1894. So these are two consecutive months. Um, like I said, we're going to title them based upon their titles here. And these are the back with their advertisements. And then you can discover what's inside and all the articles and special um, finds. But their advertisements inside are a lot of fun to read. And these are different than the 1920s magazines, which are fun. Um, and I just think that holding a piece of history as old as these are insane. It's mind-blowing um, that they've sur survived, survived the test of time. <laughs> okay, next I've got the first trio. Okay, this one is from March 1895. Okay, this is the next. This is April 1895. And then we have January 1895. And I love the different varieties of flowers that they have on this one. Pansies, marigold, poppies, for example, to name a few. Okay, so this is trio number one. Okay, trio number two. This is from August 1896, and it looks like those are some lilies on the front. This is January 1896, and again, you have those um, flowers all mixed together. Okay, and then October 1895. Here's the facts. Oops. Go. All right, let's keep going. This is trio number three. This is October 1893 with more lilies on the front. This one is from March 1896 um, with a variety of different flowers on this one. This is trio number three again and then this is August August 1st it gives you a date um, 1893 with more lilies. Okay. Trio of three, and then here's just like an example of advertisements on the back. All right. These ones are so cute. Okay, trio number four. December 1895. November 1895. Lily's Buttercup. February 1896. Okay, here's the backs. Those are cool spoons. And it's nice to see like the prices of things, which are a lot of fun. Okay, lots to discover here. I think that this is number five. 
has a nice color to it. Okay, this is from 1898, October 19, <laughs> October 1898. Still can't get used to saying that. Um, this is May 1898. And then this is May 1897. And I put them together based upon how the flowers look with each other, the colors of how the magazines have aged, and kind of use my best decorating judgment to put those together for you. Some backs. Look at that fancy sewing machine. That's so cool. Jewelry, furniture, nice. Okay, so this is number five, I believe, and I will have more individuals. I'm just pulling them together um, and organizing, so I am letting you know that you will see more individuals for sale on the website, but this is all the trios that I will have for right now. Um, these look the best together. And then you saw those, um, those doubles too. So if you need to rewind and go back, watch it over again now that you've seen them all and you know what set you want to write down, um, go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to pull a couple more things for you. Okay, let's talk about these terracotta pots. Um, I've got a stack of three here. I still have them available from last restock because um, I put a bunch into the shop. Um, what else? Okay, so I put just like a piece of um, plastic that you were going to throw out or anything. I like reusing Help Mother Earth. So I just stuck that right on top like this. And then I put one of the sprouts, can't remember which number one this is, but just put a sprout right on top. And then it sticks out and looks so cute, just like that. And then I tip them over. We're having a lot of fun with them back here. Let me show you. Okay, so here's an example up here on my shelves and I just paired them with my amber bottles. Then I've got my garden set up over here and I keep playing around with it as I need to. Um, and just stick some greens in there too. Oh, this is the strawberry basket. I have a couple more left in the shop, maybe two um, with a few different colors. Okay, and then let me show you this. As soon as I showed you these on Instagram, I got a million questions about them. Um, these are the little white pitchers with flowers inside. Oh, so stinking cute. You could hang them on a hook um, like that, just right in here. Or you could just set them up on your tiered tray, your shelf. They come in four different styles. We have a white with a white that looks so cute. And we have a yellow. Really pretty. And we've got a pink. Okay, and then this is like, that's a magenta color. This is more of a reddish pink. And I'll give you a tip for this one. I love how the leaves feel. They feel so real, which is like a different kind of real um, faux plant feel that I've ever felt. They're um, bendable here. So just a tip when you're decorating, um, these come just facing up like this, but from this perspective, you can't really see how pretty they look. So always bend your flowers, um, if they're faux flowers, towards whoever's going to be looking at them. And it looks so much better just being in this direction. Okay, so those are the four different colors and they will be eight dollars each and there will also be a bundle of four in case you loved all of them okay all right next are the boxwood topiaries this is the 11 inch and they are amazing in a set of three in the flower boxes so um these sold out the first time that i released them a couple weeks ago and you love the topiaries and I do too so they had to come back of course so I was able to get more and they have such a great filling wholesome kind of a look and their pots come a little distressed which is lovely because that makes me um it, it goes with my style which is perfect okay so 11 inch topiaries 
they are back. Okay, we needed a big piece in this restock. Um, this is the mailbox. I kind of gave you a tiny little hint at it in one of my pictures um, this past week. So this is a mailbox, literally opens and shuts. It's got a cute little secret hatch up here. Um, they can be hung. It has a hole here for hanging. Um, I will have the specific measurements on the website of that um, on that day on Monday. So that way you can make sure it fits and everything. It's around 15 inches tall if I remember off the top of my head. So those will be really sweet. These are $40 and they are a really nice natural green color. So they're metal, um, they're sturdy, and I put flowers poking out of mine displayed, which was um, really sweet for spring. So $40 mailbox comes in green and it looks like um, it's got distressed look on it, kind of like those uh, bulbs and seed boxes, which um, again, I love the distressed look and I don't have to do a thing to it. It already looks finished and perfect. Here's an up close look at everything. Okay, little flap up there. And we've got a flap here. And it is um, raised all over here, which adds a really nice touch. My YouTube subscribers are getting a little peek into a collection launching in May that I've probably waited two years to do and I just have never had the time while well, I'm making the time. Um, I'm a Gilmore Girls fanatic. I've been watching it probably since the show came out. Watched it over and over and over again. Love the characters. Yes, I've seen um, the Netflix um, newer a year in the life or something like that. I forget what it's called. Um, but it's like the four seasons episodes. Watch that the day it came out. Um, so I love it just as much as you do. So I will have different signs that I have come up with and they're going to fit our farmhouse style. So if you are a Gilmore Girls fan, it's about time. Okay. It's about time. Then, um, I will have some signs. This is an unframed sign. I'm thinking about if I like it like this, should I add a frame? We'll see. But I just thought I haven't had handmade signs in the shop in a while. Um, I do everything that I can and I want to do everything. I just cannot as a human being. So I can't do everything, but I like to cycle through having things and making things just as an interest to you and as a maker for me. Um, I don't like making the same thing a hundred gazillion times. I like to switch it up and I know that you like switching it up too. So I made this sign and then distressed it and it looks great. Okay. So that's a sneak peek at what will be coming in May. So I need to make them. They're not going to be pre-orders and you're not going to have to wait for them to be made. I'm going to have a specific amount made. So if you like this idea, I would love to get a number together maybe of how many people are interested. So if you're loving the Gilmore Girls idea, um, the signs idea, let me know because then I can, I can just get an idea, which is good. So let me know. Okay, let's see what else I have. For a minute, I just wanted to talk to you about my decor book that I've been working on. It's something that I've been working on for two years now. Um, it takes a very, very, very long time to do. I take all my pictures, I write every, th every single thing inside. Um, it's so much work and I thought that it was going to be ready for spring release. We're gonna see maybe June, I'm thinking now. Um, I just need it perfect. Uh, it has a lot of tips, like how to do it ideas. So it gives you tips and tricks. It gives you photo tips. It gives you decorating tips. Kind of my go-to um, toolbox in my head that I use. So I'm sharing that with you and it's gotta be good and it's gotta be great. So um, just wanted to update you. It's called Welcome to My Crafty Home and I'm excited. I'm excited to keep shooting pictures and getting more ideas for you. How could I forget about the bag? 
this market bag ah is so cute this is the brown um, handled style I also had a tan but that sold out last time so these baskets um, market bags sold out the last restock that I had about a week ago now and I was able to get a few more brown market bags mine's back here okay obsessed it's such a great size they are handmade hand woven and just gorgeous so obsessed market bags are so nice I love putting flowers um, stuck out of mine it would make a really pretty wreath on a door I put mine up there for a minute um, love it so sweet you could use it for going to the market whenever we get back out uh, shopping it would also make a really cute purse okay so these are adorable the measurements will be on the website and this uh, these bags are 42 I believe so great bag um, you're supporting handmade they are all different and special so market bags coming to the shop